Hello and welcome to Get to Know Science. This video is about the properties of alpha, beta and gamma radiation. So for each type of radiation we can measure these three things. We can measure the range in air, so that just means how far does the particular type of radiation travel in air before it's diminished or stopped. The penetration power, so what materials can stop that radiation and what types of materials will it pass through and then ionizing power so how strongly does it ionize atoms and for the first two we can use a Geiger counter to help us determine the range and the penetration power but before starting any experiment of this nature it's important to first take into account the background radiation because we don't want that affecting our results so the first thing you do is you measure the background radiation with no radioactive source present so that you know what the background radiation is so that we can subtract it from our results. So to measure the range in air we need a Geiger counter and we need a radioactive source and also we need something to measure distance with. So first we place the radioactive source in front of the Geiger tube and we record the count rate and then we move it a bit further away at a certain distance and we measure the count rate again and we do this over and over so we in we continue increasing the distance between the source and the Geiger tube so we keep moving the source further and further away and the further away it gets the lower the count rate is going to be and we keep moving it further away until the count rate due to the sample drops to zero. So all we have left is just the background radiation again. And that will give you the range in air. And we find that the range in air for alpha particles is five centimeters. So they can travel up to five centimeters in air before being reduced to zero. For beta particles, they can travel a lot further, that's one meter range, and gamma rays are actually able to travel very far, and in theory the range of gamma rays is unlimited. Now to measure penetration power, in other words, what materials does it get stopped by and what materials does it pass through, again we can use a Geiger tube and a Geiger counter and a radioactive source but this time we keep the distance fixed and instead we put certain materials in the way and we see if those materials are able to reduce the count rate to zero so if the count rate falls to zero that means the radiation has all been blocked by the material and we find that alpha radiation is blocked by something as thin as paper so it doesn't take much at all to block alpha radiation. Beta on the other hand will go through paper but you'd need around five millimeters of aluminium in order to stop beta particles. Gamma is even more penetrating. You would need thick lead and by thick we mean several centimeters, several centimeters of lead in order to stop gamma radiation or you'd need concrete and that would have to be at least one meter thick in order to stop gamma so gamma is the most strongly penetrating of the three and alpha is the weakest in in terms of penetration lastly we need to talk about ionization and remember that an ion is an atom that has lost or gained electrons so they become charged particles and basically radiation can knock electrons out of orbit out of the atom in a process called ionization so a particle of radiation can literally collide with an electron and the electron will be knocked out of its orbit therefore leaving behind an ion. Ionization in a living cell can damage or even kill the cell so it's very dangerous to us and we found that alpha radiation is the most dangerous in the body more so than beta or gamma 
due to its size, which makes it m the most ionizing of the three. So if we look at an alpha particle, it's made up of two protons and two neutrons. If we compare that to a beta particle, which is just an electron, the alpha particle has way more mass, and that means it's much more ionizing. So an alpha particle is very ionizing, A beta particle is moderately ionizing because it's so small and a gamma ray is actually very weakly ionizing. Because if you think about it, it doesn't really have any mass. It has less mass than this, this beta particle. So it's very weakly ionizing. In fact, it's just electromagnetic radiation. So while it can still ionize, it's actually very weakly ionizing. Compare that to the very strongly ionizing alpha particle, and we find that alpha is much more dangerous to the human body. Okay, so those were some of the properties of alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. I hope that video was helpful. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching.